Hi folks. In the comments section, I think yesterday, somebody asked if I would do a video about good Zen books. And I thought, well, that's an easy one to do, so I can run that by quickly and maybe people enjoy it. I did a blog about this years ago, many years ago, like more than 10 years ago, called Zen Books That Don't Suck. And I lost the original Zen Books That Don't Suck, but I re, uh, remade it and it is in the FAQ section at hardcorezen.info. So if you go to hardcorezen.info slash FAQ, uh, you can go and see uh, the list of Zen books that, uh, that I thought didn't suck a few years ago. And now I'm going to do this. And, and what I did today is I just pulled a bunch of books from the top shelf up there that I like. So it's more this isn't a, a thoroughly research sort of thing. These are just sort of off the top of my head books that I have that I like that I thought I'd recommend for people who want to read a good book about Zen. Okay, I don't have a copy of Zen Mind Beginner's Mind. I thought I did. Zen Mind Beginner's Mind was the very first book I ever read about Zen, and it's by this guy, Shunryu Suzuki. This Not Always So is kind of a latter-day follow-up. It's sort of a sequel to Zen Mind Beginner's Mind, and it went out of print. Zen Mind Beginner's Mind is still in print, but Not Always So is, is uh, not in print, but you, I found this on Amazon for a, a easy easily for a good price. Both books are not exactly written in the sense that I write books. You know, when I write books, I sit at this laptop that I'm using to record this video and type it all out. Uh, Suzuki didn't write books that way. He basically spoke and gave talks, and some of his talks were compiled and put into the form of a book. And when he saw the book Zen Mind Beginner's Mind, he supposedly said something like, oh, this is what my students think I'm saying. Next one, I don't seem to have a copy of To Meet the Real Dragon, which is weird to me because um, I'm sure I have it. It's probably just not in the right place. But I do have this other book by my teacher, Gudo Wafu Nishijima. To Meet the Real Dragon is sort of Nishijima Roshi's uh, Zen Mind Beginner's Mind. Uh, it's uh, They took his talks and they transcribed them and they uh, fixed up the English and they made it into a book called To Meet the Real Dragon, which you can still get. It's still, I think it's a print-on-demand now, so the original printing is all gone, but you can still get it from Amazon as a print-on-demand. This is a later thing that was put out uh, as Three Philosophies, One Reality. These are talks he did for NHK Radio, and I believe these were more carefully kind of translated and then fixed up in English with Nishijima Roshi's participation. So uh, so this one might be a little closer to what he actually wanted to say. I, I think uh, To Meet the Real Dragon is also pretty good, so uh, you can find that too. This one is a big favorite of mine, Embracing Mind, Zen Talks of Koben Chino Otogawa. Koben Chino Otogawa, or he's usually just known by the name Coben, was the teacher of my first Zen teacher, Tim McCarthy. Tim has yet to put a book out, although you can get his writings in uh, From Bodh Gaya to the Cuyahoga, which is on kentzendo.org. Kentzendo.org is his website, and he's got some of his writings on, on that, so you can actually read Tim's writings there. But if you want a book of what his teacher uh, talked about, it is uh, Embracing Minds and Talks of Coben Chino Otogawa. Uh, he didn't put out a book uh, during his lifetime. He died in uh, 2001, I believe, and this book came out several years later, and it's real good. I like it. This is the only book I have on my shelf by Dainin Katagiri, but he's got several others. Actually, I must have I must have a stash of Zen books somewhere in my house, because there's books I know I have, but I can't find them on the shelf. But anything by Dainin Katagiri is good. My favorite book uh, by Katagiri Roshi is called Each Moment is the Universe, and I know I got that somewhere, but I couldn't find it, so I'm showing you Returning to Silence. But Each Moment is the Universe is good, too. They are similar to the Suzuki. Suzuki Roshi books in the dining category didn't actually sit down and type a book out, but these are his talks, which were refixed up by his students. Refixed up? Anyway, they were rewritten and fixed up. I guess that's refixed up by his students, and I think Katagiri, as far as I know, liked the versions that came out. So, uh, so get him. I believe there's at least three titles by him, uh, and this is one of them. These two are not sort of teachings of Zen sort of books, they are kind of, well, this, uh, oops, sorry, the first one is called Zen Confidential, 
And Zen Confidential is by Shozan Jack Hobners as a single white monk. And they are both sort of almost confessional books about his life as a monk at uh, the um, Mount Baldy Monastery, which is where we hold our retreats, and that's the place where I met the author of these books. Uh, they're, they're real good. They're not, as I say, so much like Zen teachings as more like the life of an American Zen monk. And as such, I think they're pretty valuable. He lived up on that mountain for years and years and did a lot of stuff. And these are the books that he wrote about it. So I recommend those as well. This is an advanced reading copy because it says ARC. Oops. Everything's backwards on this. Actually, it is forwards. It's not like a mirror view that I'm getting when I look at myself on this monitor, so I, I do everything backwards. Anyway, Zen Teachings of Homeless Kodo, which if you buy it won't say advanced reading copy on this. I don't know why I have an advanced reading copy. I don't remember them sending it to me, but maybe they did. Anyway, uh, this is a collection of teachings by Kodo Sawaki Roshi, and Kodo Sawaki Roshi was my teacher's teacher, one of his teachers, uh, and he was also a teacher to Shunryu Suzuki and Daimin Katagiri and Koben Chino. So he was very influential on the strain of Soto Zen Buddhism that ended up in the United States. Although Kodo Sawaki himself never came to the United States, couldn't speak English, uh, but uh, these are translations. This is Buddha is the Center of Gravity by the ever-controversial Joshu Sasaki Roshi. I think it's a good book. You probably will not be able to find a printed copy of it anymore. Last time I went online looking for one, it was in the hundreds of dollars. Uh, this I got for $4 at a bookstore in Denton, Texas years ago. It's, uh, it's really good. I, uh, you know, what you think about Sawaki Roshi is your own business. I think the book is good and the book stands for itself without any of the other stuff that surrounds him. Uh, so I still recommend it for that reason. This one is Living by a Vow by Shohaku Okumura. Okumura Roshi is a teacher who's Japanese, as you might guess from his name, but he's been living in Indiana for a few decades now, so his English is real good, and he writes the books himself. You know, these aren't just compilations of lectures he did. This is probably the easiest of the, uh, I think he's got four or five books out now, and this one's probably the, the one that you, you know, have the least trouble if you just kind of picked it up in raw from not knowing too much about Zen and, and decided to read it. I'm also really fond of this one. Uh, this is, uh, this is, I believe, the newest one, the Mountains and Waters Sutra. It's more difficult than Living by a Vow, but it's really good and it gets really into the uh, depths of Dogen's philosophy. So those, uh, that's, uh, that's some hard stuff to write about, and Okumura writes about it in a very clear way, and I would recommend any of Shohaku Okumura's books. This one will be harder for you to find. I found it online. He, Gyome M. Kubose, was, I don't know if I'd call him a teacher of mine exactly, but he's a guy I briefly sat with when I lived in Chicago for a few years. I, go, I used to go to his temple, and I liked him a lot, and I thought the center within was a pretty good summation of his teachings. He's from the Pure Land school of Buddhism, uh, not Zen. So Pure Land Buddhism is... Not quite as philosophical as Zen, let's put it that way. So, so the books that come out of that tradition tend to be a lot less dense than Zen books. But Kubose himself was very fond of Zen. So even though he was a Pure Land Buddhist teacher, he ran a Zen sitting group uh, that would meet on Sunday mornings in Chicago. Uh, he's passed away since then. But uh, this is his book. Uh, you probably have to go online to find it. It's, it's pretty rare these days. But but uh, I, I would recommend it. And just to kind of represent sort of basic Buddhism, what the Buddha taught was, was the first book I read of just early Buddhism. And this was one that was on Tim's syllabus, Tim McCarthy's syllabus, when he did that Zen class. There was Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, this book, and... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Was it Teachings of the... No, no, it was this one. It was... It was. I keep getting this one con uh, confused with a book called Teachings of the Compassionate Buddha, which are both real similar in that they are just collections of the early Buddhist sayings and pretty reliable translations. If you want, you know, a nice short book of the OG Buddha's 
original sayings and stuff. It's not Zen, so it's it's more the, the older tradition of Theravada Buddhism, which is a little different. But I think this is a reliable book and pretty easy to find uh, in that tradition. Now, just because I can't stop there, I thought I'd give you my three favorite books about Godzilla. This one I'm going to do first because it's the easiest one to find. It's still in print. Eiji Tsuburaya, Master of Monsters. Uh, it is by August Ragone. Uh, August wrote all of the text in this book, so I want to give credit where credit is due, but I also want to credit myself a little bit because this book is was my baby. Uh, when I worked at Tsuburaya Productions, this was a project that I spearheaded and pushed through the company to great resistance from everybody around and managed to get it through. So even though I didn't write the text of the book, I hired August to write the text. I chose all the photographs that are in it. I I wrote certain sections of the book myself, and uh, not not August sections, but uh, there's one section credited to me, and there's one section credited to Akira Tsuburaya, which I actually ghost wrote for Akira because he didn't didn't speak English, and uh, it's I, I think this is a pretty good book. It's full of lots of cool pictures. Uh, I. Uh, I was real proud of some of the pictures I managed to find. I had to go to great lengths to find some of these photos. Uh, they were not... I, I wanted to make sure it wasn't just duplicating the same photos that are in every Japanese book about Eiji Tsuburaya and Godzilla and Ultraman. So I went and found a lot of rare photos, and, and some of them uh, only appeared in this book for the first time. They weren't even in Japanese books before this. So this is a nice one. This one, uh, this is by Stuart Galbraith, the, see, the fourth or the third? The fourth. Stuart Galbraith the fourth. Stuart stayed at my apartment in Tokyo while he was writing parts and researching parts of this book, and so I know him, and this is a real good book, and I helped him get some of the interviews that are included in this book, and I was there for some of the interviews. And a real nice book about uh, Japanese monster movies and how they were made. And it's out of print, but you can find it fairly easily even so. Just go on Amazon, look for used books, or go to your favorite used bookstore and see if they've got it. And finally, this is probably my favorite book about Godzilla, Japan's favorite monster. It, there was a, all these legal difficulties. Stuart Rifle's a friend of mine, and he wrote this book about Godzilla, which is the most thoroughly researched book I've ever seen about Godzilla. It probably beats the pants off a lot of Japanese books about Godzilla in terms of its its research. But there were all these problems with Toho, the owners of the copyright to Godzilla, which is why the name Godzilla and the image of Godzilla do not appear anywhere on this book's title, which I think hurt the sales of it and why it's out of print now. But it's really the greatest book about Godzilla, I think, overall. A really, really nice, solid book. So there you go. There's some favorites. Don't forget, I also have eight books about Zen out, and I highly recommend those, but I think I'll keep that for a separate video. And uh, there you go. If you want to donate to my ability to buy more books for my shelf, uh, you can send me money via PayPal and Patreon. Most of it will go to buy me bananas for breakfast, but some of it might go to books. And a lot of it will go to keeping me healthy and glowing to make more of these videos, because that's the way I make most of my money is through your donations. Thank you very much. Much. Really appreciate it. See you later. Bye.